They were called, by some, the eighth wonder of the world. Their names were Millie and Christine McCoy, and they were born into slavery in Welch's Creek, which is near Whiteville in North Carolina, on July 11, in 1851. One of the girls weighed 12 pounds and the other weighed 5. They were connected at the lower spine and they shared a pelvis. Each sister had two arms and two legs. They often referred to themselves as a singular person. Their parents were Jacob and Monomia, and they were owned by a blacksmith with the last name of McKay. The twins later changed their last name to McCoy, switching out the A with an O. Once they were born, they understandably began to attract a lot of attention almost immediately. And when they were 10 months old, McKay sold them for $1,000 to a man that was interested in showing them off. Because of their potential show value, they changed several hands over time. At the age of three, they were appearing in P.T. Barnum's American Museum in New York City. They earned an additional 50 cents on top of the price of admission. One of the men that was charged with exhibiting the girls kidnapped them from their legal owner, Joseph Pearson Smith, and he took them to England. Smith would end up being their last manager, and he reportedly paid $30,000 for them. After searching for the girls in England, Scotland, and New Orleans with the help of their mother, they were eventually found, but it took three years. He soon would hide them near Spartanburg, South Carolina, to prevent them from being taken or kidnapped by Union soldiers during the Civil War. Smith's wife taught them how to read, how to write, sing, dance, and how to play the piano. She also taught them German and French, which they used when they were exhibited as the two-headed girl. Even though they were free after the war, they chose to stay with the Smiths. And in the summer of 1871, they again traveled to England where they performed for Queen Victoria, who gifted them a pair of diamond hair clips. For the next 30 years, Millie and Christine continued to travel as a singing duo for decades where Christine was a soprano and Millie an alto. They called themselves the Two-Headed Nightingale. They retired, having visited 46 states and multiple countries around the world. And here are some of the ways they were described back then. In the steamship city of Brussels from New York on the 2nd of May, 1871, arrived a cargo which, in the words of Mr. Toole, may be termed most extraordinary. Of all the curiosities ever unearthed by the immortal Barnum, none can compare in the most minute degree with Millie Christine, a daughter or daughters, whichever the fastidious please of the state of North Carolina. In 1880, Wyoming newspaper read, all of the movements of the world's greatest curiosity were as these of one person, although Millie Christine has two heads, four arms, and four feet. The body is joined just below the shoulder blades, throwing the two heads almost back to back. Below the shoulder blade, the body is one, and there are four well-developed limbs with the two inner ones being slightly shorter than those on the outside. She sits on an ordinary chair as easy as a natural person, and her movements are very graceful considering the multiplicity of limbs. She weighs over 200 pounds. While neither head is handsome, they both have pleasing and winning manners and are quite vivacious. She, or they, are very well educated speaking English very smoothly and correctly while they possess some knowledge of several foreign languages. They eventually wrote a booklet and it sold for 25 cents. In 1912, Millie contracted tuberculosis and she died on October the 12th. Doctors gave Christine morphine to help end her life quickly and painlessly and some accounts say that Christine lived for around 72 hours after her sister died. They were originally buried in an unmarked grave in a double coffin, but they were eventually moved to the Welch's Creek Community Cemetery in 1969.